All right, so what I'm going to present is actually uh, something that some of you may have seen. It's the presentation from the PCF where we had the uh, review of the top line data from Triton 3. Now, a word of caveat, right? This is what we talked about at PCF, so this is in the public realm. But we're not, I'm not going to be able to answer questions about additional data, some of the details you might want to know, because that will be upcoming at GU ASCO in three weeks' time, and so we can't, you know, uh, um, uh, presage what, uh, what, what will be coming out shortly. So this was the press release we saw in early October uh, saying that Triton 3 was in fact positive. So this is the randomized clinical trial looking at rucaparib in patients with BRCA or ATM mutations and metastatic castration resistant prostate cancer. This was in the pre-docetaxel space, uh, which gets to the kind of the key detail that of course uh, this trial was randomized against a docetaxel containing control arm. So here's the study design, really very straightforward. In terms of the genetic eligibility for the study, it was just BRCA1, 2, or ATM. One prior androgen pathway inhibitor was required, no uh, prior docetaxel, unless it was in the hormone sensitive setting that was allowed. The androgen pathway inhibitor could have been in any setting. And then patients were randomized either rucaparib or the physician's choice of docetaxel, abiraterone, or enzalutamide. Critically importantly, patients then were given the opportunity to cross over from the physician's choice arm to rucaparib if they had confirmed radiographic progression. The results we're going to talk about that we talked about at PCF and we'll talk about today are limited to the progression-free survival results. There was a pre-specified step-down analysis. Overall survival is something hopefully we will see in the future. 375% of the patients were required to be BRCA mutant patients. ATM mutant patients were then by study design limited to a quarter of the patients. Here's the baseline characteristics, no real surprise here, very consistent with, uh, you know, with, with what we see in, in clinical trials. This was an international study uh, conducted in the U.S. and Europe. Um, so this is the 20% of missing patients uh, as far as ethnicity. This is because the study was conducted in countries where gathering such information is not allowed. BRCA2, of course, outnumbers BRCA1 approximately five or six to one. And as I said, ATM was limited by study design. No real surprises here, but the thing to focus on is that 20 to 23% of patients received docetaxel in the hormone sensitive setting. Uh, slightly more than half received abiraterone, the rest uh, mostly receiving enzalutamide. And then in the physician's choice arm, Almost 56% of patients were designated to receive docetaxel, uh, and then an almost even split between abiraterone and enzalutamide. So this was the pre-specified primary endpoint of the study, imaging-based progression-free survival. Um, this was re-termed imaging-based simply because MRI imaging was also included, so not radiographic. Uh, but as you can see, strongly in favor of the rucaparib arm with a median uh, imaging PFS of 11.2 months versus 6.4 months in the physician's choice arm with a strongly positive hazard ratio of 0.5. This is the intent to treat population. Again, you know, strongly positive. Um, so this is including the ATM patients. And, you know, we've seen this in multiple PARP inhibitor studies, right? ATM patients uh, don't receive the same benefit as the BRCA patients. Here's specifically the ATM subgroup. So in terms of the safety summary, um, no real surprises. Rucaparib is an established drug, of course, approved in ovarian cancer uh, and breast cancer, also previously approved based on Triton II and prostate cancer. So there really were no surprises in the toxicities consistent with what was previously seen and no reported cases of MDS or AML. So I know I'm, I'm going a bit fast to make up some time, but Triton 3 met its primary endpoint. There's a significant improvement in progression-free survival with rucaparib versus physician's choice of docetaxel or a second-generation androgen pathway inhibitor in the BRCA subgroup and the intention to treat population. Triton 3 confirms the efficacy and safety results from Triton 2. 
Uh, but the full details of all these secondary endpoints will be at GU ASCO. I, I think important perspective here, and this is something certainly the, the PCF community was very focused on. You know, th this had a rigorous and patient-centric design, different than, than what we've seen from a lot of prostate cancer studies. So this is the first clinical study to compare a PARP inhibitor with docetaxel as one of the standards of care. And more than that, after you know, almost 30 years of doing clinical trials with docetaxel comparator arms and dozens of prostate cancer clinical trials with docetaxel in the comparator arm. This is the first clinical trial to ever beat docetaxel in the control arm in prostate cancer. We've never seen that before. So it was rigorous in its design in including the kind of control arms that we expect to see. This is what we are doing in clinical practice, but you know, as we know, a lot of times control arms are uh, somewhat weighted uh, to give a positive outcome. But the patient-centric and that crossover was built into the design. Every patient with confirmed radiographic progression was given the opportunity to cross over, and the data of how often that happened and whatnot will be available at GUASCO.